Well, I am honored and privileged to introduce to you, and many of you have heard Pastor Gloria already, but we have her back in the house, and she has a great word for you. So if you will give a great big shout to my mom, Pastor Gloria. Yeah. She's going to bless you today. Wow, you guys was anointed this morning. That is great. Hey, everybody. How are you? Yeah, back in Phoenix, Arizona. Hallelujah. So good to see you guys. You know, I have to tell you a little something, something. So, you know, even though it's a little damp out there, my mouth was so dry, (laughs) I decided to coat my teeth and gums with Carmex. So, note to self, I don't think that was a very good idea. I feel my tongue swelling up. (laughs) Anyway, it's so good to be here. What's that, babe? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, you know what? This is the greatest church in the valley. <laughs> hey, and I don't, woo! I didn't even have to tell you that. And I have to tell you something else, okay? I'm not spanking you. This is just a suggestion. This is, to me, the greatest church in the valley. Seriously. We have searched high and low. In, in Tennessee, y'all. And I have to tell you something, nothing compares. I'm not, I'm not being biased serious. So here's my little suggestion. You ready? Why isn't every seat full this morning? Yeah. Woo! We should be reaching one for the gospel and then discipling them. Because we can't keep all this treasure to ourselves. But it's so good. You know, I'm just going to do this real quick. But I really do want us to put our hands together for three components components this morning. One for Pastor Barr. Don't wait, wait, wait. It's a safe time. One for the pastors and elders and every one of the leaders. Oh, and one more. And all of you. Let's put put our hands together. Woo! It is so great. Um, I'm going to get right into my message. And I have titled this message this morning, How to Become a Breakthrough Champion. Now, what I, the reason I pause there is because I have to share something. Just because, family, we're Christians does not make us breakthrough, uh, breakthrough champions. Can you say amen? That's something that we have to project and, and study and do things and do the warfare and do everything that we can according to the word of God. So before I get started this morning, just give me a shout. How many want a breakthrough in some area of your life? I have to tell you, so do I. I think that's the greatest thing is to stand before God and have challenges ahead of us. Because you say, well, you know, you pastor and you, your husband and you bishop and so on and so forth. But you know what the truth is? I have to every day become, make myself become a champion, a breakthrough champion. <clears throat> so if we really want that... Uh, in prayer, you know, I've been in prayer since I knew he was going to come. And I know that this is a praying church, and I know you guys are just on fire. I'm, we're so, Bishop and I are so proud of all of you. It's what you create in this house under the lead pastor and pastors and elders in this home. And all the leadership here is what creates the atmosphere and what creates the glory of God for his kingdom. And so, you know, none of us are, are uh, you know, I used to think that people, spiritual leaders were above us, but actually we are just in front. We're just leading the way. And because of you guys, it makes it happen. So I want you to say this morning, I want to be a a breakthrough champion. I want you to tap your neighbor and say, I want you to become a breakthrough champion. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) I love you guys because you're so easy to minister to. But the truth is, you know what I have learned a long time ago? As, as a believer myself since 1974, I don't want to take on just the appearance of being a Christian. I don't want to take on the appearance of being a breakthrough champion. It's like the Coca-Cola, you know, I want to be the real thing. You know, that was the greatest slogan that they came out, out with, amen? You know, the real deal, the real thing. And, you know, people, when, when they see our life and they see who we are, they understand if you are not walking as a breakthrough champion or if you're just in the appearance of it all. Because it's our whole conduct. And I'm not just talking about good, bad, evil. I'm not talking about that. Mostly it's our conduct with our words. 
you know, what we say, how we handle situations. We're always being watched. I found out as a believer that we all live in a glass house. So we got to be careful how we project our nature, amen, how we respond to different situations, and especially in our homes, moms and dads, amen, with our next generation. So this morning, I want to share three points with you. Number one, for breakthrough, you must be a pioneer. So what is pioneer? What does a pioneer do? They forge, they establish. What does that mean? We are the head and we're not the tail. You know, when anybody forges their way, like back in the olden days when they found new territories and stuff, they had to be the head, amen? Well, God's designed us spiritually. If you know Christ today, which I hope you do, and if you don't, you will. I believe that. I believe you're all homies today, but I could be, I could be wrong. But the thing is, God has created us to be winners. We are. See, God's not saying, you know, you're going to be someday. You know, he's saying, you are the head. You are not the tail. God has already designed us. Once we get born again, we become, the Bible says in Romans, that we have the spirit of God that lives on the inside. If you do a study on that, if you read it a little bit more, it says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So everything on the inside of us is designed to be a winner, designed to break through our situations. Now, you confessed to me this morning, you shouted with me today, that you really want to be a breakthrough Christian. You want to see, I want to be a champion. And so I'm going to share these points because I want to get you from A to B this morning and how to make that happen. Because like I said, I confessed on myself just last week, you know, what I'm saying. We all, we all face those challenges in our life. So how, what do we do? Some here this morning, I believe that you're, like Pastor Barb said today, you're not here by accident. You know, our footsteps are ordered of the Lord. And you might have said, you know, I don't usually go to first service, but maybe I will today. I don't know. But according to the word, you know, forge means this. It means this. You need to forge through, and some of you will identify with this this morning, spiritual dryness. I just had to forge through that last week. Come on, amen, let's get real. We're, if we're going to be the real deal, all right, then we got to confess our faults one, one to another today. So every one of us, and also how about this, spiritual denial. Well, wh what does that mean? It means, you know, I just don't feel worthy. You know, I did this last week. I thought that bad thought. I, you know, I said a bad word or whatever. So I don't feel worthy you know, to, to come to his throne room boldly, amen? But so we can't walk, we can't, listen, you can't ride a horse in two different directions at the same time because you're not going to be a champion if you feel unworthy. If you're in spiritual denial today, today's your day for new beginnings. Isn't that the greatest thing that you don't have to wake up and look behind you? Because what does the Bible say anyway? Put your hand to the plow and don't look back. Why do we keep looking back? My past, I'm a failure, I'm insecure. You know, I'm going through all these crises. Oh, my God. Oh, I read Facebook. I just have to sometimes walk away. <laughs> Shut up. Ah, do the word, you know. You don't feel worthy to complete the course of God. Well, of course you can complete the, the course of God. Paul said it. That was his desire of his heart, that he was going to finish the course. And I'm telling you all something right now, okay? Watch. What he went through is so humongous to our little minimalized situations in our life. Read the book. Read the book, you know? So breakthrough is a product of us pressing for the mark. Just like Paul said, we got to press forth. And what does that take? When we're pressing through family, listen, it's going to take resistance. Do you think the enemy is just going to let you march right into your destiny? Do you think the enemy is going to say, oh, you want to be healed? Well, here's the door wide open. You know, oh, you want your marriage healed? Well, okay, you know, here's the door. Walk on through. No, every breakthrough Christian champion knows if you want to break through, you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. You're going to have to stand your ground. You're going to have to declare who you are. 
the head and not the tail. You're going to have to declare this morning who the, what the Bible says and what God says about you. We've got to stop the murmuring and complaining. We've got to stop the nonsense of what we believe about ourselves. It's a lie. Every opinion that you form in your mind this morning that does not line up with the word of God is a lie. Say, I have no opinion outside of the word of God. Come on. So that's where we're at today. Well, listen to Zechariah 4, 6. Jesus said, it's not by might. Come on. Are you working it out yourself, guys? Men? Y'all working it out? Because men love to work out those little problems. Say amen, ladies. This is, hey, this is your big opportunity. You know what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But Zechariah 4, 6 says, Jesus said, It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You got the greatest interceder right now called Jesus Christ sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you. So don't say no one's praying for you. No one's there for me. I'm insecure. I'm fear fearful. Everybody else is so happy, clappy. And I'm going through all this mess in my life. Change it. Tell Jesus, thank you, Lord. I woke up today and the Bible says, the word, thus saith the Lord says, you're sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. Yeah. Say right now. Yeah. Didn't say yesterday. Right now. He's sitting there. Father God, wherever he's like, Abba Father, I don't know. They're one, whatever. You know, I'm praying for for sister Denise or my daughter Denise. See, he's, he's making spiritual warfare for you today. How many, you know, this, okay, so when I want to talk about one more thing. One of the things that I want to share this morning in forging and to becoming that breakthrough champion is we've got to get into the place where we can be full of praise to our Father. Now watch, you know, praise is to me not just singing a song. I mean, I, or even singing melodies to God, which God loves. He inherits what? The praises of his? People. Yeah, he inherits it. I mean, he loves it. But the truth of the matter, praying to God, speaking to God, praying in the spirit, all of this is combined. I mean, what a great, amazing thing of favor for us from our Father. Amen? So, what happens is when we begin to praise God, talk to God, and, and, and deem him high above everything else in our life, what happens is that spiritual warfare will begin to kick in, and also it changes the component of what we think and believe, and it gives us the confidence that we need. I was talking to some of the pastor and elders, women this morning, um, you know, in the back room, and um, oh, I, we were talking about lack of confidence. You know, confidence is the most amazing thing that you can have. I see people, they might be this tall. They might wear thick glasses like that. They might walk a little funny. They might do a lot of things. And then you might have that perfect, what we identify, that perfect person. You know, that six-foot guy or whatever, you know, so on and so forth. But you know what? They both can walk into a room, and the one that's going to command authority is the one that walks in with confidence. And the good news is today, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by who? Spirit. By the Spirit of God. So we have our confidence, not in ourself, but the confidence comes through the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. That's what gets me through, is you know what? When I have lack of confidence, and I do so many times in my life, I can just say, you know what, God, my confidence doesn't come through myself, but I can put my trust and hope in you. Um, I love this. It says in Philippians 3.3, 3, this is a place where we put no confidence in our flesh. And that's just what I said. Remember the story, guys, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but when Israel went up against the enemy in the Old Testament, what did they do? The Bible says this is like a really great thing because we're talking a little about, about forging ourselves into praise and believing what God's word says over our, 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 our circumstances. So what did they do? The Bible says that they sent out Judah. What is Judah family? 
Yes, Judah is praise. Hallelujah, you guys are good students. The Bible says that the children of Israel, listen to what they said, said, who will lead us in the fight? Have you been there? Gosh, who's going to lead us in this battle? And then the Lord's response says, Judah. You see, as champions, as, as breakthrough champions that we want in our life, you've got to realize that God already sees you where you are. You know, it makes me think of a story outside of my notes, but if I can get this right. Remember Peter? He was Simon first, Simon Peter. And then God said to him, you know what? Um, you know, and that, that just meant, it, it, okay, Simon meant read. And what does a reed do? do? It blows in the wind. But God said there'll be no more of that. And he changed his name to Peter, which means rock. So every time God declared his name, he's saying, I see you as a rock. Well, what, what did Peter do? I mean, did he go out and be the perfect person? Come on. He, you know, I'll be with you, Jesus, forever. I'm going to stand strong and mighty in you. I will never leave your side. But what did he do? Not once, not twice, but three times. He did what? He denied him. That little brat. And God's like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, Peter, what's going on, man? And then he walks on the water, right? He did all these amazing, he said to Jesus in the boat, if that's you, Jesus, bid me to come. In other words, give me a revelation. If you tell me come, I'm coming. He gets out there, and then, of course, he, he lost his way. You can actually spin that either way. I, you know, you can spin it for good or bad. I've heard preachings on both sides of the coin. But the truth of the matter is God sees you this morning. He doesn't see your your failures right here he's saying you're a rock i see you like i did peter and i love peter i stood with peter to the end and now peter is in the in the, walking on the street of gold with our father so it, that breakthrough champion you got to begin to see yourself because god's calling you to see yourself at the end of your victory not where you're at stop feeling sorry for yourself Just saying. But praise was put out, right? So the most precious thing to God is to praise. I already established that, right? I have to tell you something, and this is really my own personal testimony, and I say it because it means so much to me. For months, I have, uh, I go into my bedroom in the morning, and, you know, just because I don't punch a clock doesn't mean you guys can't get up five minutes early and do this too, Okay. But I go in my bedroom, and I like to listen to Christian uh, teachings if it's sound doctrine. And I'll go in there, and I'll shut my door, and I will get my communion. And I take my communion. And I don't just take it, pop it in there. I really take my communion. And I'm believing God for a manifestation in my own personal life. So I take my communion, and then I do my, my blood, and I do the body of Christ. And I begin to dedicate my body to God as a living sacrifice, holy and accepted to him. But something happened to me along the path of just wanting a, a manifestation in my body, which I'm really doing 100% better. But what happened to me is that communion, that time, that praise or, or that time spent with God has really changed me in so many ways, my love for God, my it's just like Abba Father is becoming more real and more personable to me. And you think, like, since 1974, how could that possibly be? But I challenge you this morning in that. We need men and women together. I mean, you, you men too. I feel it's so easy. You know, it was, it was Mary that wiped the, hair, the tears, you know, off of the feet, you know. Uh, it was, you know, women. But men need to worship. Men need to uh, know that they're the head and not the tail. You know, it's not something you have to arrive to. It's something that's biblically sound that you're already walking in. Amen? So doing that communion time has just been, and I will continue to do it. And what I found out, you know, God always rides on sound of praise. And he, you know, when you begin to worship God in praise and in your prayer time, something magnificent happens. The Bible says that God wrote, Actually, there's a scripture that says God rode on the sounds of the heavens riding on a chariot. He rides on chariots. 
I, did I say chariots? I meant to say cherubs, cher, cherubs, the angels. But he, hey, he could have a chariot if he wants. I don't care. <laughs> Makes no never mind to me. But this is why he sent in Judah first, because he, he knew that when, the, when they said, well, who's going to fight the battle? Well, when Judah went in, God gave him instructions. Remember that? Judah goes in, what? And he instructs them to, you know, send in Judah. Because he knew that right there, the power that, that was facing any obstacle was going to be broken down. There's nothing that God can't pre- penetrate. Nothing. And I don't care what circumstance you're in today, I will stand before you and tell you it does, well, it matters, but it doesn't matter when God's going to bring the victory if you do what? You stand on the promises. You know, I just feel like, and I say this to myself too, sometimes when we have all the obstacles in the world, the way, you know, what we need to do is begin to build a bridge over them to, to succeed into everything that God has us, rather than just be in a hole and letting it come down on top of us. Use it. Use it as a way out. Amen? And so that's what we want to do. So we had Judah first. Praise always come first. I think about David in the Bible, and you're not a stranger to this, this, this scripture. David was being sought after, remember, by King Saul. He knew he was going to be killed. Think about it, running, hiding, not sleeping, hiding in caves. Actually, you know, we think, well, you know, because he was David. Come on, somebody. He was flesh. Did he have holes in his hand? I don't think so. He didn't. So he had fear just like we would. You're going to have natural fear. Somebody's coming after you. But what did he do? He exalted God. And what did, what did God do? Protected him built a wall of protection, a fortress around them. Some of you feel like you're out there floundering, but when you put your hope in God, God builds that wall around you. He'll protect you from your enemies. He'll protect you from yourself. He'll protect you. And then everything that happens, he's going to turn it around for your own good. So this is a prime example of being a champion this morning, a breakthrough champion. I look at it this way, family. I look at it just like this. You're in the boat anyway, so keep pedaling forward. Is that pedaling? No, that's the wrong word. Keep thinking. I do that all the time. I'm going to write a book on bloopers. Hey, and if that road gets in there to stick those feet on, it's hurting you. Pedaling away. But now I want you to think about something. You know, the atmosphere opens when we trust God. The heavenly lattices spread up far and wide. Give me that countryside. <laughs> Y'all, you, you millennials don't get that. But anyway, our lifestyle, our personal lifestyle honestly has the ability to move out into the supernatural. I want supernatural in my life. I want supernatural. I want to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I want to lay hands on the blinded and see their eyes open. I want to walk up to somebody that's in a wheelchair and say, silver and gold have I numb, but in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and be healed. Because that's the day we're pressing forward to. See, these last days, listen, if you feel opposition, it's because the last days, the, Satan is recognizing that his time is short. And he don't come up, he actually doesn't come after too many that's on his side. So you got to recognize that too. Amen? Yeah. So this morning, you want to be a pioneer. Listen, praise is just not an act of the flesh. Can you say amen? amen. The enemy knows that Thanksgiving, you know, is going to just, again, open up the heavens and also give you a personal revelation to what you need for yourself. I mean, I'm telling you, some of you this morning are neck neck high or whatever, is steeped high in problems. But how proud you should be of yourself. You give yourself an inward clap because I'm going to tell you something, you're here today. So you know what that tells me, friends? It tells me that you're here still in the battle. So when you walk out of here today, don't say, well, you know, I did that. No, you're here. You're still here worshiping. That tells me a lot about your character, that your breakthrough, but you just need a little more confidence. Amen? So we need to get that going. Okay. So I challenge you to let your praise go up first. Psalms 102, 18 says, This shall be written for generations. Think about that. 
your children, your children's children, their children, if the Lord is to tarry. Now watch this. This shall be written for generations to come. The people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. When you start the ball rolling, come on, somebody, your children are going to praise them. Their children are going to praise them. It's so exciting. Number two, I got three points. I'm going to quickly hurry. Breakthrough believers know how to move out, and they're not afraid to do so. We're going to confess that till the cows come home. Fear is, fear, listen to me, family, fear is the master spirit of manipulation. I think personally, and I think you can, you'll, you'll be in power of agreement with me, everything that we go through, and, and it's a negative or a situation, fear is accompanied by it. Am I right? Fear is there. And Satan is the master at allowing that. And the more that we give place to fear in our mind, you know, Barney Fife back in the day, for those that used to watch <laughs> Mayberry or well, Andy Griffith, you know, he, he said to Andy, nip it, nip it, nip it. And God is saying it this way, bind it, bind it, bind it. You know, we got to nip things in our life. But listen to this amazing scripture. I love it. I was Well, let me just say this. I was thinking about where did fear come from? Fear actually started in the garden. In the garden with who? Anybody know? Adam. No, you, you got a minus there. Adam <laughs> was, <laughs> honestly, if you, if you study it, Adam was the one. He, when Jesus was, when God was in the, the garden, he'll probably say to me, uh, he's got a question mark. Is that deer, is that, is that deer in the headlights or something? <laughs> no, but it was Adam. And w- don't, don't look it up, honey. <laughs> Pay attention to the word. <laughs> don't rebuke the wife. <laughs> for maybe, okay, they both had fear. <laughs> yeah, thanks, sis. <laughs> She'll stick up for me. <laughs> It's a, well, anyway, our bodies were created in the garden at the beginning of time. Hey, i got to tell you something. This is really cool. I don't know if you've heard it on the news. The scientists, I don't know if there was more than one or whatever, and I won't go into the story deep, have proven. Now, this is so good since the Big Bang, amen, but that it, they have done a gene, genealogy thing, DNA, all the way back, watch, where you, we only have one mom and one dad. Oh. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah! Even the world... It says, my mama and my daddy was Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. I love it. So anyway, but he hid himself in the garden. And when he was looking for him, you know, God didn't say you did something wrong. But Adam, he said, what are you doing? He said, I hid myself because I was afraid. That's where I got that scripture. I hid myself. That's what Adam said. Eve did not say that. Woo-hoo-hoo. Yeah, yeah, ladies. Okay. We ain't going to talk about her little mishap at the apple tree. <laughs> Woo. I know fear is a deception. Say deception. I know it is. But listen to 2 Timothy 1, 7. And I love it. And you guys know it. I know you do because I know this church teaches the word. It says, for God did not, say not, give us a spirit of Say it like you mean it. Fear. So on some, now we have our natural fears, amen. Our natural fears is, you know, we're not going to walk out in a car unless we've got serious mental problems. So we got a natural fear there of different things. But there is also in the spiritual realm, there's spirits that are signed of fear. And that's where we really get troubled and we really need to take authority. But God said right here in 2 Timothy, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear. But watch, if you're going through depression, if you're going through fear, if your mind's being attacked, listen to this great thing. But he's given you the spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. Come on, the abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. So if this is true, watch the results. The greater the pressure. Woo! We know that saying, right, that we all know it about the charcoal. Turns into a diamond with, yeah, with pressure. So listen to me. We've got to get past fear and move into our anointing and move out of it. See, 
take, the Bible says put on, take off. Put on, take off. There's a whole bunch of it. I think it's in Ephesians. You put on, you take off. So if you, whatever is that's on you, in you, causing you to go wayward in your mind or in the world or whatever, put something in and take something out. Amen? Spiritual ch- champions, like I said, move out under pressure. You know, keep in mind, God is the great general. He sees it all. Actually, he's behind, I like this, behind the enemy scene. He is. He's behind it all. I mean, he sees everything. You know, he, nothing gets past him. Thank you, Jesus. So when intense pressure happens, we got to learn to turn it around. The greater how, the heat, the greater the co- quality of our life. First Peter 4.12 says, Beloved, this I really want you to pay attention to, all right? We got to stop, before I read you the scripture, we got to stop feeling sorry for ourselves, sucking our thumb, putting on our baby bib, kind of throwing up and, you know, all of us happen to do this. <laughs> that, that, was, that was an imitation of a baby bottle, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, okay. But First Peter says, or First Peter 4, 12 and 13 says, Beloved, think it not strange. Come on, you're going through something today? You think that what? That's new on the block? Nah, no. It says, strange concerning what? Fiery darts which try you. Now watch this. As though something strange. God in our life sometimes will say, you know what? You know what? You've been saying, I'm a breakthrough Christian. I'm a champion. Yay. And you fought a couple of battles and you've won a couple of things. And he'll stand back and, and say, okay, really. See what happens when this giant comes. You know, because when giants come at you, you better not run. You better stand up. And I don't care how minuscule your report is of victories. It may be so tiny, okay? But you take that tiny little report and you tell the devil, I fought that lion. I fought that bear. And if we don't learn to fight the enemy in the, the, the smaller areas of our life, when that giant comes... That, that's going to be a very fearful thing. So to be that champion, start taking authority according to the word of God. That's a lie from the pits of hell. I'm not going to be sick. I'm not going to have marriage problems. Do you think that, you know, here's the, here's the deal. It's not that we don't go through things. We're not lying when we confess the word. But I say to the devil this, according to what is written, according to the word, I'm healed. I told Satan before when I was near death's door, I'll tell you something, Satan. You didn't give me life and you can't take it away. You can't take it away. I got purpose on this earth. I'm going to fulfill my destiny. And, you know, that's hard when the fear is like right on top of you, huh? And he said, the devil's telling you, you're going to die. And I said, I, I won't die because it's, you didn't birth me. Into this. I was known before the foundation of the world. So you're, you were birthed this morning as a champion of whatever. And, and you know what? The gifts are inside of you. So stand up and take your place. You can't be a soldier that just does this every day of your life. You see what I mean? You can't stand in place and march. Move towards that giant. David, David, you know what? David's accomplishments, and I think it's in there somewhere, but I'll, I'll throw it out because I'm going to say it now. David's accomplishments was he didn't put his trust in, in a stone. Come on. All that heavy metal and, this, and the giant's got like this little tiny opening, like right there. No, he, put, he knew that if he put his trust in God. See, God saw that little bitty boy out in that field. And, and here's what, here's what you've got to say to yourself like David did. And I've got, got three minutes. I'm going to shut this down. And my daughter's giving me the stink eye. No, I'm kidding. She's not. <laughs> David had to have said to himself, well, if my God could see me, little old me, out tending sheep, and I'm just a boy, how much more will my God deliver this giant into my hands? Did he not declare that? Who are we then, right? Right, Sam? Who are we not to declare what God's word says over us? Come on. Yeah. So the, this is what, it, now watch it. Do you know that God is the Lord of the breakthrough? Listen to the scripture. If you don't know it, it's good. It's Chronicles 14.10. And it goes, 
Because the Bible describes him, watch this, the Lord of the breakthrough. Or the scripture said, the Lord who bursts through. When you put your trust in God, God is, you know what God is going to do? He's going to come right in and burst through every wall that's in your path. He's going to burst. He's going to come straightway. Say, you're going to touch my child. Come on, mamas, daddy. You ain't going to touch my child. That's my child. I'll get that stick on its hiney, but you got to back off. <laughs> but God loves the impossibility, and he starts it. I'm not going to be able to finish this, but the third, I, no, I just don't have time. But I will tell you, let me just get back here, and I'm going to end it. I'm, going to, I'm just going to end it in this scripture, Hebrews 12, 1. And I want you to hear this, okay, because... God is always trying to get something to us. You see yourself in sin. You see yourself. And, you know, we categorize sin. And, but you know what you're doing and what you shouldn't be doing. Can you say amen? And I'll end it with, um, if you want to be a sincere, non-appearance breakthrough champion this morning, then you've got to do what this says. Not is the letter of the law. Come on, somebody. Because God loves us. Remember Peter? He loved Peter. But, you know, he said, Peter, you got to grow up. It's time to grow up. And he says in Hebrews 12, 1, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily hinders our progress. Use the barrier in front of you, like I said, to become the bridge to being an overcomer believer. God is so good. And, you know, if you'll just stand to your feet today. I know that today you all want, you've already challenged yourself that you want to be overcoming Christians, that you want to be, you want to be in the place of your destiny. Can somebody say amen? amen? That makes you happy, makes you feel satisfied because this old world, friends, cannot satisfy our soul. The communion of God, and I don't just mean in physical communion, but the communion of God making love to Abba Father every day. And saying, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Don't make it just a song we sing. I want to have every one of you raise your hands this morning. I want to have you repeat a prayer after me. Thank you, Father. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We worship you, Jesus. We want to be all that you want us to be. Satan, I bind you. We will not walk in a spirit of condemnation. But we walk in the liberty of the one who died for us. But give us Holy Ghost conviction that causes us to run to the altar. That causes us to run away from things that so easily beseech us, beseech us in the world. Things that pull us away from our destiny. Things of sin that cause us to have mental agonizing re and over us later, Father God, after we've done it. Let our minds be renewed with the word of God. Let, let sin repel us, Father. Let the nature of the world grow strangely dim in your sight, Holy Spirit. We love you, Jesus. May the Spirit of God rest upon this beautiful people this morning. Let them not feel like a failure. But Abba, Daddy, just let them know how much you love them, how much you believe in them, and that's why you sent your only begotten Son. Let the fear of the enemy be gone in Jesus' name, and let the rest of our destiny be manifested, Father God, at this day, at this pivotal point this morning at Faith Builders Church in Phoenix, Arizona. Let your will and plan be made known. Let the peace of God rest upon it as we rest in your anointing, as we rest in your peace, as we rest in the confidence of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Jesus, that you are our bridge and you are our fortress. Say with me this morning, Heavenly Father, today I declare I really want to be a breakthrough Christian. I want to be that champion. I don't want to have appearance of a champion. I declare today that I walk in the newness of your Holy Spirit. 
And today, I declare new beginnings over every circumstance of my life. And Father, when I get off course, when I get off course, when I get off course, put a red check of Holy Ghost inside of me. Check my heart and make me humble myself and repent in the name of Jesus. Help me want to do better. Help me not to be that immature Christian, but help me rise up for the glory of God, for my destiny, not just for me, but for my children and my children's children. For all that are around me, may I look at them as a lost and dying world, that I might seek one out today, that one particular person, Holy Spirit, and share my faith of Jesus Christ and lead them in the sinner's prayer. Come on, get real, guys. Don't get weak on me because it's for somebody else. I want to lead somebody to Christ before the end of the year. Say it. I want to lead somebody to Jesus Christ and bring them to this house before the end of the year. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to say one more thing, and then you want to stick around for Bishop Pruitt. And Oh, okay, but I'm not. I'm, okay, I'll hand you the thing, but I want to say one more my train went off the track. But, oh, I want to say one more thing this morning. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ, and I know I've went five minutes over, sorry. But if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, it's as easy as this. Say it with me this morning. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner, and I need Jesus Christ and the love of Him to live inside of me. Forgive me for being a sinner. I believe, God, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come except through Jesus Christ. If you've done that family today, I know sometimes the simplest things in life may seem, because we're not crawling on our knees on broken glass. The Bible says this. Are you ready? That God right now, say right now, has written your name in the Lamb's book of life. So you come and see one of the pastors or elders after church. If you gave your life to Jesus, you'll never be the same. God bless you. Love you guys. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat just for one moment, if you will. How many was blessed by the word this morning? Woo! And I know you're all sticking around for second service, right? We're going to have to put down some chairs, Elder Jeff, so get ready. But we're going to have a wonderful time as my dad comes and shares the word. But I want to give an opportunity for you to sow into Pastor Gloria's life. As the covering of our church, I want to make sure that we are blessing them. Amen. They came all the way across the country, didn't charge a dime. They're staying with me. But I want them to go feeling blessed by the kingdom of God. Amen. This is a couple who has given it all away to the Lord, everything, multiple times, because money doesn't have them. They do it for the kingdom of God. So I want you to dig deep today. I want you to pour a love offering into her life. Amen. And we're going to send them off to do something for God. Because how many know they have a work for God to do in their life? There is a mission of God being released over them and we want to partner and be be a part of that. Amen. So um, take a minute to fill out. You can write the checks to Faith Builders Church. We'll write one check to them and uh, just pour our love into their heart. Especially at Christmas time. Let's just sow that little extra seed to give our love back to them. Amen. How many appreciate the covering of our church? If it wasn't for them, we would not be here today. We'd not be sitting at 949 East Bell Road, I promise you. (laughs) I got the torch and I got to carry it, but I did not birth this thing. And so we're blessed to be able to pour into their lives. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to just sow, Father God, into their lives, into the success of their marriage and the miracles that have manifested and their labors of love. Father, we sow this gift of love according to your word today. Lord, let them walk away so refreshed, so blessed, so rejuvenated, God. We thank you, Lord, that as we give to them, the blessings will overflow into this house and into their homes. And we give cheerfully today and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And let's receive this offering for Pastor Gloria. What I'd like, uh, pastors and elders, we have a few minutes if you'll make your way forward still. Um, For those of you who would like prayer for anything, please make your way forward like we always do. Take a few minutes to receive your prayer today. And then 
then you can be dismissed and get ready for second service. If you're staying for second service, we will all open up the altars for second service. You'll have plenty of time to get prayer. Amen.